So I am super excited to present um, at Layer 8. Last year at Layer 8 was where I got my start in OSINT, so it's kind of come full circle for me. Um, I Since then, I've become an OSINT analyst in Cyber Recon for a large consulting firm. I volunteer for Operation Safe Escape. I am on the advisory board for OSINT Curious. And I am a senior judge in Trace Labs. So this presentation is on um, maritime OSINT. Uh, I kind of fell into this uh, after writing a blog. And I thought it was really cool because mostly people do like flight tracking. Um, I didn't see too much uh, maritime stuff. So I am uh, WonderSmithRay underscore Ray on Twitter, if you want to follow me there. Okay, so what kind of intelligence matters to us when we're looking at uh, maritime intelligence? Uh, we want to know uh, who owns the vessel or owned the vessel, where they're going, their routes, their ports, where they're stopping. Uh, then you can kind of determine like how long they're going to be there, where they're headed. You want to know what they're transporting. Is it valuable? Is it dangerous? Is it chemicals? Um, who is on the vessel, the crew? What can we uh, gather from from them? What can what do they tell us? What kind of tech is on the vessel? Um, and and is it exploitable tech? which I'll get into in a minute. And what can be found on social media? Can we determine like a pattern of life? Um, are there phishing vectors that we can pull from posts on social media? So why do we care about ships? Um, ships run the supply chain. Um, ships in our Navy, missile defense. Um, so they're, they're pretty important. If, if we look at a lot of the more recent examples of hacked ships, we see the 2017 um, Maersk NotPetya uh, attack that was a ransomware, $300 in Bitcoin is what they wanted, but it ended up costing like $300 million in loss because they delayed uh, the shipments. Um, they are spoofing positions, so they're not matching the location of where the ships are. Again, that could be supply chain, that could be something more devastating like for the Navy or missile defense. Um, drug dealers have used uh, hacking ships to, to infiltrate like containers and <laughs> ship their cocaine and heroin to different locations in the containers. So, there's a ton of things you can do with ships, and I'm what a lot of people don't realize is they don't really keep up with the technology on ships. So a lot of the most vulnerable structures on ships are the navigation and the propulsion systems, and they're not updated very often. Um, and on top of that, crew members bring in uh, like USB sticks, they're plugging them in, and nobody's really keeping track of that. So what type of vessel can we track? Um, and we, we wanna know who owns it. So some of the bigger ones, cargo ship, ferry, um, Navy, we touched on, cruise ships, fishing boats, yachts, and tankers. Um, so those are some of the major ones that, that you would wanna look for. There are standards for fishing vessels that can help you narrow down what you're looking at. Um, there's the IMO number, which kind of works like a VIN number for ships, like you would have in a car. So it, you can change the owner of the ship, the, the ship flag, uh, and the name of the ship, but you don't change the IMO number. It never changes. So you can use that to track the ship. Um, the vessel name is usually printed on the side of the hull. There's the port of registry, um, and you can see it's under the vessel name on the stern or sometimes on the side, the IMO number we already talked about. There is a national registration number, which can usually be found on the hull of the vessel. 
and a phishing authorization number, which can also be found on the side. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out is uh, flags of convenience. So this picture here is actually taken from a story on ship breaking. And if you've never heard of ship breaking, it is um, something people do to kind of skirt uh, operating costs, taxes. They, 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 they'll change their flag name. So if you're in the US, but you're trying to sidestep certain taxes, you can say that your ship is from Panama and you would register it under the flag of Panama, but it's actually like a United States ship. So when these ships run out of use, they'll just kind of park them somewhere and uh, break them down for parts. And then those parts, they call that ship breaking. Those parts just kind of sit there and it's like an environmental disaster. Um, so, so the ship, flag that it's flying under is not necessarily, or ship uh, flag that it's sailing under is not necessarily the flag of the actual location that it's at or from. And, and they can also avoid safety standards that way, which is kind of terrifying. Um, some ways we can track ships. There's a lot of sites that do this. Um, I wanted to highlight a few. The USCG Maritime Information Exchange, or CG Mix. Here you can put in a vessel name or number, uh, call sign, and you get back all this detail, like ton of details. There are safety certificates, the dates. Um, sometimes you can get like PDFs to open up. They'll tell you the length and the depth and build year and all kinds of information. The Maritime Mobile Access and Retrieval System, or MARS. So here they have a um, table of internal call signs. So if you wanted to know what the call signs are, you could come here and you can look them up. Um, it also gives a little bit different information than the first one. See, I searched the same ship, but it has um, some different information in the ship station particulars, um, call numbers. So when I'm looking up a ship, I'll use several of these sites um, to kind of get the whole picture of the ship because they don't always have all the information. This is one of my favorite ones, shipspotting.com. Um, so shipspotting.com is uh, people spotting ships and they put up pictures and they put up information about the ship. So like this one has the satellite position, the course, um, destination. Uh, but the fun part is a lot of them have internal pictures. So my picture on the bottom here, you can see how they took a picture of their navigation system. So if you wanted to exploit that or look up if there are any um, CVEs on any of this stuff, you could easily do that. Sometimes information is just out there in the news that shouldn't be leaked. Um, like this one, NATO accidentally revealed this uh, secret mission capability on the photo for the submarine. So any, any kind of information leak uh, in maritime can be detrimental to like national security. So we have to be careful. Another cool thing here um, is tracking cable ships. This fascinates me. I, I don't know why this is available to the public, but this is not the only site that does it, subtelforum.com, uh, but they, they list a bunch of ships dropping cable lines. So if someone wanted to take out any one of these cables to a specific spot, you know, dive down in the ocean and cut it or whatever. Uh, you have all the lines and where they go and what's what it's powering. Um, and these are pretty easy to find, you know, and maybe they're powering, uh, you know, an island where we have a base or or something like that, like a military base. So we're going to switch now to tracking the roots of ships. So knowing the routes kind of helps us to figure out the patterns that could lead to like a physical attack on the vessel itself. 
Um, MarineTraffic.com is a big one for this. Um, it shows all the ships, like those are all ships and vessels there with the different little icons and you can hover over them and it'll tell you what it is, uh, the last position it was at, um, and a ton of different details. Like, and, and it'll tell you if it's a tanker, if it's a fishing boat, and you can watch the path, like it's, it's animated, you can watch the path the ship is taking. So it it allows you to search for a specific specific ship. So I searched for the same one I searched in the other websites, the Marlin Amber oil tanker, and it tells you um, the track it's taking, when it's going to be there. Like it's it's ETA, it's underway, it's speed, like how fast it's going, because it's taking the satellite details. Um, so here's what you get and searching for a specific ship shows you know the wind the current port it's heading to uh, nearby vessels and it shows it on a live map now this does have like a paywall for more information which is why you see those locks there uh, but you can get a lot of information just from before you hit the paywall And then below that, it gives you a summary of like where the ship is and the coordinates, where's it going, what kind of ship it is, and then the details about the weight and the call sign and, and all that. So you can get a pretty good overall view of the ship, you know, what it would carry, where it's going, who might own it. Uh, the vessel timeline shows you the, sh the trip that the ship has taken up until the point that you're looking at it. So you could verify that it's the ship that you're looking for based on previous sightings of the ship or maybe previous photographs that are on the site because people, it's a weird thing, people take pictures of ships. Uh, it's, it's like a whole thing um, and then they upload it. So a lot of these sites have pictures of these ships at different ports and stops along its journey. So that can help you verify that you're looking at the right ship. Another website uh, that does the same kind of thing is VesselFinder.com. Um, it's very similar to marine traffic as it shows all of the, the icons, they move, it uses satellite data um, to pull its location. And you can see here, uh, it shows that it's a chemical tanker, um, its coordinates, the flags, the ports, um, how fast it's going. So it's it's using like the same kind of info. Um, I have heard that some of these are better, some of these sites are better than others for certain ships. So I would probably try a, a few different ones to see what data can, you can get and then put it all together. Um, so another thing you can do is use marinevesseltraffic.com to track global military incidents. So you, you can see in this picture here that um, if you call out uh, warships, it can show when incidents are going on. So it could that could be a way to track that some military something is going on in that area. Another thing that could be useful, um, this is kind of what Micah was talking about in his last talk, was charting. Uh, you can chart global shipping networks. So if you use the historical sata satellite data, you could possibly create uh, a shipping network graph that could show the entire network of ships. Uh, because when a ship is over 300, uh, gross tonnage, uh, passenger ships, cargo ships, um, they're all required to install the satellite system, the AIS. And those AIS messages are sent every ten, two to 10 seconds when they're underway. And when they're, when they're anchored, they send one every three minutes. So it's fairly easy to get a good view of how these ships travel and where they go and, and what they're doing. So using something like Gephi, uh, which I believe was used in this large image here, you can get a, a really good view of, of what everybody's doing. 
So cargo. Cargo is important because um, if you uh, disrupt the cargo, you're exposing the supply chain. It could be carrying dangerous chemicals. And sometimes people are trying to avoid sanctions. So it's good when you're looking for cargo to understand uh, shipping container basics. So each shipping container has a bunch of numbers on it. Uh, there's like an owner code, uh, product code, registration number, and I'm not going to go through all of these, but um, it'd be good to know that if you wanted to look up, there are sites that help you look up where the shipping container is going and where it is coming from and what it is holding, like fleetmon.com. So on this site, you can put in that container number from the last slide, and it will show you the path, who owns that container, um, where it came from, where it's going, what it's holding, um, and that could be integral to your investigation if you're looking into specific cargo on a ship. So next is uh, the one that I find the most fun is the crew. When you're looking at the crew of a ship, um, you're thinking like, what fishing vectors, if I wanted to get into this ship, what fishing vectors could I pull from the crew on the ship or what information leaks could I get from them? There are a few different sites where maritime people get together and chat or try and find jobs. Um, one is Maritime Connector. So this is kind of like a LinkedIn for uh, marine people. Uh, there, I think there's two others that I'm aware of, seafolks.com and myship.com. So you can go on here and you can look up a specific person just like you can on LinkedIn. They will tell you uh, what ship they're on, who the captain is, um, how long their contract is. Uh, they'll give you details about the ship. So like, this is all the details just from this captain, um, his whole sea record. And then it gives you pictures. And depending on how recent they are, you now know what his computer is, um, what other systems he's running in the room, um, technology. Uh, I mean, you might be able to read the binders on that wall there. So there's a lot of information that can be pulled from these sites. And then you can follow them over to social media. So we found this Roman, I'm not even going to try and say his last name, uh, guy. And I was able to find his uh, Facebook, his LinkedIn, or his, his VK, which is what the uh, Russian Facebook profile, which then gives his family and his um, hobbies. So you can craft uh, a phishing email to this guy based on like what he's into and you now know his whole history. So next is technology. Um, ships are basically complex industrial control systems just floating in the ocean. They have severely outdated software and most of their systems are set to, um, you know, they have default or missing creds. If you go to Shodan, you can pretty easily pull up a satellite system that's on a ship. You can put in Inmarsat, which is a big satellite company, uh, Inmarsat Solutions US. Uh, you can look up Sailor 800 VSAT, which is another satellite and you can get information about their, their system just that easy. You can find remote desktops, um, all kinds of stuff. Another technology uh, that I just learned about recently that I thought was really cool and I wanted to uh, put it in here is a digital twin. Um, so the OSINT part of this is, I guess, knowing that this exists because you could find out like what the programs are that are running this um, and maybe see if there's like third party leaks or or something you could do with phishing that way but what a digital twin is is it's a virtual replica of a whole ship so they take with sensors they collect like real-time data about the working condition where the ship's at 
and they take all that information, they analyze it, and they uh, can change the ship virtually. So they'll update systems um, and software that way. And obviously there's security concerns. A lot of the, uh, like maybe, I think they're trying to push it out for 2021 maybe. Um, they're all gonna have like a digital twin system. And the security concerns are pretty big there. Um, it could be used as like a blueprint for a hacker to, you know, know what the whole system looks like and they can map out an attack ahead of time and fine tune it without anyone really knowing. And these digital twins aren't just used on like ships, they're used for like offshore infrastructure, like oil and gas rigs. Um, so it's pretty scary to me. So that is all I had on ships. I wanna preface this by saying I'm not a ship expert. I get a lot of technical ship questions after I do these presentations and I am not sure I can answer them. But if you have any questions, I would love to take them. If not, you can find me on uh, Wondersmith, on Twitter, uh, Wondersmith underscore Ray. Um, and make sure you take a look at those boats. And I have a bunch of links here if you wanted to write them down really quick, or you can have my presentation, that's fine. So if the moderator has any questions for me, I can take them. Yeah, thank you for that, Ray. That's actually really fascinating, especially just OSN <laughs> around maritime. So some of uh, the first questions are, for your slides, do you plan on making them available to the audience? Yeah, yeah, you can have my slides. I'll put them, I can put them up in the, I think there's a channel for it. Yeah, the presentation slides channel. Thank yeah. you. And so kind of going to the next main one, it's so uh, there's a question from Omnium. So let's say you're a company that owns the tinker ships. What advice would you give to them for securing against gathering OSN data and essentially how it is they can better their security posture? Uh, firstly, change your credentials. <laughs> a lot of them, like I said, <laughs> use default credentials so people could just log into it. I mean, it's, there's not really much work there for, for a hacker. Um, and then just being aware of your crew and what they're bringing on, um, what they're plugging into the system, uh, what they're saying about their their travels. That they all take pictures along their way and they put them on Instagram. It's very easy to find. So maybe just like uh, monitoring the crew a little more. This is becoming a big thing uh, recently. Um, people are starting to take ship maritime uh, security more seriously. Actually, to, to that point then, where, just from what you've seen so far in OSN, what are you finding uh, relative security tends to be? It, is it much an afterthought or? Um, right now, it seems to be a lot of people who are starting to realize there's a problem. I'm not sure that they're making the changes yet. Um, because even if you just do a Google search, there's a lot of people pointing out the issues, but I don't see a lot of companies, you know, they, they're worried about the shipping, they're worried about their day-to-day -day operations, and I don't know that it always crosses their mind until they have something like the Maersk issue where their whole, you know, $300 million shipping enterprise is, is at a standstill. But then you don't hear about that for another, like, five years, and everybody forgets about it. <laughs> a very reactive approach it's uh so i mean for those companies that do own their ships then when it comes to the information that you're finding especially through these various links you're showing the audience here have you do you know uh the relative permanence of that data given anything that's published to the internet tends to stay there for a while but is there an easier way or is it even possible for them to clean up then better uh the satellite data, I don't think so. I think the satellite data gets broadcast and they, I, I think those companies can store it if they want. Um, as far as like social media information, that would be, I mean, you have to work with the entire crew for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as with any company, it's, it's, it's a process. I think just being aware yeah. of the issues are probably the first step 
And what's especially fascinating is it's it's not something you would expect. It's really cool to see just the different strategies where OSINT in general, but in terms of uh, just the amount I've learned just from hearing what you found in Maritime, you mentioned at the start of the talk, uh, you kind of fell into this. Uh, would you mind sharing with us just kind of how that came to be? Uh, with the Maritime stuff itself? Um, yeah. I. I wanted to write a blog. I saw a bunch of people writing about flight tracking and I didn't want to copy what they were doing. So I thought, uh, ah, ships. <laughs> and then I just wrote, I just started uh, <laughs> researching and looking stuff up. And then I had people come to me after I wrote that blog and start asking me about maritime stuff. And then I became like the maritime OSINT go-to. Uh, so I decided to make like a more in-depth presentation on it because people seem to be into it. And it is really, it's fascinating because I don't think you think about ships too often, but I mean, they're, they're shipping how much of our stuff daily. <laughs> I mean, it'd be a huge thing for them to go down.